The day is May 27th, 1936. The Queen Mary is getting ready to embark on her first voyage. King George V is quoted as saying, Today we come to the happy task of sending on her way, the stateliest ship now in being. It has been the nation's will that she should be completed, and today we can send her forth no longer a number on the books, but a ship with a name in the world, alive with beauty, energy, and strength. May her life among great waters spread friendship among the nations. This day, she'd be departing from England, not just as a simple means to an end where travel is concerned, but as an experience all of her own. Now, this ship was huge. Gigantic. And not to mention, quite luxurious. It had all the amenities that one could ask for. Everything from pools, an actual ballroom, and even a hospital. As far as many people of the time were concerned, this ship was the only real way to travel without losing your personal sense of dignity. And yet, despite the exuberance of the ship at the time and how excited everyone was about this, one woman, a known psychic at the time, would be quoted as saying, The Queen Mary would know her greatest fame and popularity when she never sells another mile or carries another fair paying passenger. Over the course of this ship's lifetime, she'd have carried some 2.2 million passengers, and then another 810,000 military personnel during times of war. During World War II, the Queen Mary was transformed momentarily into a warfaring ship. This ship had been noted for its ease of speed and transport of so many passengers and just how big was and how fast it was able to go. So, they painted her over a grey camouflage. The ship would garter the nickname Grey Ghost. After the war, restoration methods would be put into place and it would take some 10 months before the ship would be brought back to her former glory. At which point, the ship would continue to bring the likes of many passengers across the Atlantic. Over the years, the Queen Mary has been known to have entertained the likes of many well-known guests. Persons such as the likes of Elizabeth Taylor, Audrey Hepburn, Winston Churchill, whom of which actually signed the D-Day Declaration while she was on board this very ship. The Queen Mother, and even prior to his presidency, Dwight Eisenhower. But eventually, as all ships eventually do, the Queen Mary will be facing her final journey. By 1965, the entire ship was operating at a loss. At this point, air travel had become all the rage, and people just weren't taking ships anymore like they used to. And thus, arrangements were made for the last final trip, a journey to her new home, which would be located in Long Beach, California. Considering the actual historical importance of this ship, passengers were willing to pay quite a price just to be part of this last journey. People paid per individual anywhere from between $1,200 to $9,000. The trip would be 39 days and would make multiple different stops along the way. And on the morning of October 31st, 1967, the ship would start her final journey. This final journey would be a particularly important time for the ship's captain, John Treasure Jones. Because not only was this the final voyage for the Queen Mary, but also, once they would arrive in Long Beach, he would be taking his retirement as well. Eventually, the ship would be converted into a hotel. And to this day, despite the fact that the Queen Mary is no longer a voyaging vessel, she still gets plenty of visitors. And unsurprisingly, those visitors are not necessarily just there for the typical history of the ship. But also because... Queen Mary is haunted. And to be fair, a ship that has seen so many faces, so many different types of people, war times, that's not necessarily that surprising. To make this even more interesting, many actually consider the Queen Mary to be the most haunted ship in America. As a whole, there is a known 49 reported deaths that have occurred on the ship and another 150 known spirits. One of those spirits is reportedly that 
of a little girl, age four, five years old, named Jacqueline Torn, also known as Jackie. Jackie had been one of the many passengers who had been aboard the ship back in its heyday. As the story goes, Jackie had been in the second class pool when tragically she drowned. Now eventually, the second class pool on the ship would have been replaced with the Royal Theatre as it is today. It's reported that guests whom are in the Royal Theatre can often hear the sounds of Jackie splashing frantically as she calls for her parents. Another story aboard the ship took place on July 10th, 1966. The weather had turned quite vicious and the watertight doors down below had began closing, as was protocol. Now it's worth mentioning that many of the younger crewmates would often engage in this game of chicken where they would jump in and out of these closing doors for lack of something more entertaining to do. On this day, an 18-year-old crew member named John Petter had misplaced his wrench. He was going around asking his fellow crewmates if any of them had seen it. So while these doors were closing, he decided he was just going to hop right through real quick and see if it was in there. Unfortunately, when he hopped through those closing doors, he got caught. It took a total of 15 minutes from the initial ordering to close these doors for them to pry them back open and get John out. They immediately began trying to transport him to a different location. They injected him with morphine, everything they could, but there was so much damage done to him. His pelvis crushed, arms he was literally bleeding from his nose, but unfortunately their efforts were kind of futile here, and unfortunately John lost his life. He had simply just sustained too much damage. To this day, many visitors actually report seeing apparitions of John. He's known for leaving greasy handprints around the ship, as well as on actual people. He's even known to actually show up full body and go up to guests and ask them if they've seen his wrench before disappearing again. There are a lot more stories that can be told about this ship. But honestly, I'd be stuck here forever going over every single one. Everything from a cook literally being baked alive by his own crew to people actually hearing these sounds of just these unworldly growls and even catching them on video. But I think it's fitting that if we're gonna end this video, we should most definitely talk about what is reportedly one of, if not the most haunted place on this ship, room B340. It's worth noting that this room had actually at one point been three separate rooms for third class, and eventually later on was remodeled to be just one larger suite. So to continue here, in the 60s, it's reported that one man went completely insane. In his moment of delusions, he actually brutally murdered his wife. So, an honest response here, the security personnel on board decided, you know, let's lock him real quick in the room that he was in. Because they hadn't made it to shore yet. So that's what they did. They kept one guard outside to make sure he didn't escape. And when they'd make it to shore, surely they would hand him over to the authorities. It's said that not long after having locked that door, the man inside actually began frantically banging on the door, pleading the guard outside to let him out. Someone just please let him out. Saying that someone else was in that room with him. Now, of course, the guard on duty here was listening to this, and this man had just brutally murdered his wife. Obviously, he was going to bang on the door any excuse possible to get out of there because you know as soon as they got to shore they were gonna turn this guy over to the police you know no way is he gonna be the one responsible for letting this psycho out of that room not to mention there was no possible way someone else could be in the room so yeah no completely off the table the guy was not going to open that door now eventually the guy stopped banging on the door pleading to be let out there and the guard just figured out oh, he must uh went to sleep. The next day, they docked to New York and police made their way to the room completely ready to apprehend this guy. They get to the room, open the door, and everyone just stops. Absolutely flabbergasted. 
horrified of what they saw. The room was completely just wall to wall covered in instruments. An arm over here, leg over here. This man, whom had been 100% alone in that room, had been completely ripped apart, wall to wall. Now, there are different variations of this story, but whichever variation you believe, there is no denying that people who, to this day, actually book the suite will leave in the middle of the night absolutely terrified. Not just that, but numerous people have actually had heart attacks in that room, actually dying, often in their sleep. In fact, this was such a problem that for 30 years, this room was completely closed to the public. Locked. Double locked, actually. And the actual number outside indicating which room it was, was removed to keep members of the public who would walk by from knowing specifically which room it was. All in an attempt to keep people safe from whatever the hell it is that was inside of that room. Is in that room. Unfortunately, that brings us to the conclusion of this video. But, if you liked it, like! If you have any comments or any more stories, because there are so many stories about this place, please comment them below. I would love to read about them. And if you would like to see more videos from me, subscribe. Now, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.